Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Back with another forecast discussion, we have a multi-day severe weather outbreak on our hands starting today, Wednesday, March 1st, and going through Friday, March 3rd. For today, we have a slight risk, level 2 out of 5, from north Texas in through southern Arkansas, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama into southwest Tennessee, with a large marginal risk surrounding that. We do have an all-hazards threat today, tornado risk 5% there within that slight risk corridor, basically from the area just east of Dallas in the Arklatex up through places like Little Rock, Memphis, and Jackson, Tennessee. We also have a damaging wind threat and a large, potentially significant hail threat with storms today. Then we move into tomorrow, Thursday, March 2nd, and that is going to be the main event, quote unquote, of this particular outbreak. We have a now a moderate risk, level 4 out of 5 for parts of the Arklatex. Dallas-Fort Worth, just on the outside looking in of that moderate risk, but you are under the gun for the enhanced risk, level 3 out of 5, which surrounds that. So still a significant severe threat for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metro tomorrow. Uh, and there's going to be an all-hazards threat, all, including some significant hazards that are possible. 15 hashed for significant EF2 plus tornadoes there across the Arklatex region, including places like Sulphur Springs, Mount Pleasant, Texarkana, down towards Shreveport into southwest Arkansas. Significant damaging wind is a threat as well. 45% hatch there. Very high probabilities for damaging wind tomorrow. Perhaps significant damaging wind gusts over 75 miles an hour with this system and some significant hail in those same areas. So tomorrow looks to be a very potent severe weather day. Uh, and again, that is Thursday, March 2nd. And then we move into Friday as the threat continues into the southeast states as well as up into the Ohio River Valley. From Kentucky all the way down through Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. We have a slight risk out for now, uh, which could which likely will see some shifts over the coming days and perhaps some upgrades depending on how things go uh, going into Thursday and then Friday morning. So pretty potent threat. We're going to start off looking at today's threat, the slight risk for Texas up into the Mississippi River Delta, and then we will look into tomorrow pretty deeply uh, as it appears again to be the most potent day of the next three. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Water vapor satellite imagery to start things off today. And you see a little uh, swirl up here in the northern plains and an even bigger swirl out here across the California region. That is our next trough that is digging down the California coast and going to eject into the southern plains for tomorrow, uh, for tomorrow's event into Friday. This particular trough will not be an impact for today's particular event. Uh, we'll we'll have we'll talk about why we're going to see severe storms today across the region, uh, ahead, well ahead of this trough that is digging down. But this trough, again, very very well defined here in the water vapor satellite imagery, and that will be our main player for Thursday and Friday's event. And if you look at our upper air maps, we do see that trough out there across the California coast that is going to continue to dig down over the coming days and will provide us with some very favorable ingredients for severe weather come tomorrow into Friday. Otherwise, mostly zonal flow across the region, just a broad fetch of west-southwesterly flow across the region with some embedded perturbations within this broad scale, more zonal flow. And we'll go down to 700 millibars here and show you what's going to be the main impetus for severe storms today for this particular uh, event. And that is these that is a couple of these little kinks in the flow that are rounding within this uh, broad zonal flow. This one in particular is actually initiating some severe storms right now across uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. If we look at our radar imagery right now, we do see some storms. These are severe storms. They are producing some large hail and damaging winds at this point. They are moving across the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. Let me give you a closer view to show you who is seeing some severe weather right now. Let me put the single box on. And so right here, portions of the western Dallas-Fort Worth metro area south uh, of Arlington, places like Mansfield, Cedar Hill. Right now it's about 7.14 a.m. at the moment. These will be well past by the time you see this video. Uh, and then we have a storm, a couple storms out to the west by Granbury, Crescent, Godley, moving toward the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex uh, at the moment. So some strong to severe storms ongoing right now across this region, just ahead of this small-scale perturbation, this little shortwave embedded within the flow. You see the little kink there. That is going to move off toward the northeast today 
quite slowly within that zonal flow, and that will be the impetus for severe storms. And we've talked about this a lot before. These small, low amplitude features, these short waves, tend to provide a lot weaker forcing than a large scale, um, very strong trough. Uh, and so the overall storm mode today may initially be discrete. We, have, we may have a, a nice uh, window for discrete storms across this region, the Arklatex off to the northeast before things eventually cluster out ahead of this shortwave. But this shortwave providing some very weak forcing. And again, this trough out here to the west is going to be hang back quite a bit today. So that is not going to be a player. We're going to have to rely on these little perturbations embedded within the, within this broad zonal flow to help us get severe storms today. And we've already started to see that this morning here across north central Texas. So because we don't have a very strong trough to deal with, we're not going to see very strong a very strong low level response today. Let's take a look at our 850 millibar analysis, and you don't really see a, a widespread low-level jet across the region. We do have a low-level cyclone up here centered across eastern South Dakota, producing some stronger low-level winds up there. But that is going to be uh, well off to our north and not going to be impacting the region of concern for today. We do have a little bit of low-level jet. It is out of the southwest here from southern Missouri down into far northeast Texas. But this is not going to be a stout, low-level shear type day as you know, some, compared to something we saw a couple days ago here across Oklahoma, where the low-level shear was just obscene, not going to be something, not going to be similar to that today. We will have enough low-level shear for a tornado threat, as well as a a threat for large hail and damaging winds. But the overall low-level shear is not going to be, um, you know, something you consider for a significant tornado event. As in contrast to what we're going to see to, for Thursday uh, or tomorrow's event. So we'll go to our surface map as well. Take a look at our surface data. Sur strong surface flow up there in eastern South Dakota. Out of our way, not an issue. We do have a little bit of a closed contour here across southeast Missouri. Uh, and we do have a frontal zone that is draped across this region uh, and will stay put for most of the day today. Let's go ahead and look at our surface data. We can try to pinpoint this front, the, the location of this front. So uh, we're at thir just after 13Z, just after 7 a.m. here, and you can see the wind shift right away. We'll start off with our southern plains sector. Northerly winds here across much of Oklahoma, winds out of the south or southwest across much of Texas. So our wind shift is going to be somewhere in this vicinity right here. A little tough to pinpoint, but our wind shift is going to be somewhere in here. That is our frontal zone. And that's not going to do a whole lot of movement today. As we said, this trough is hanging back to the west, so we're not go going to see strong surface cyclogenesis out here, to, uh, to at least for today's event, to allow for uh, you know a uh, stronger flow in the low levels uh, and uh, to move this front quite a bit. So this frontal zone is going to stay put, and this will be our main focus for severe storm development today. It's going to be somewhat close to this front right ahead of that shortwave embedded within the flow. As far as our moisture goes, you see we have a very strong reservoir of moisture already up to the Red River. Unlike our last event a few days ago, we're not going to have issues with getting the moisture up into the region as it's already up here into the region. 60s dew points all the way up to the Red River through central and northeast Texas. And that's going to stay put today. Again, that, that front not going to move a whole lot. And we will see maybe we will see a very strong reservoir of moisture here for for this event as well as the next couple of days uh, severe events as well. Let's shift a little bit farther out here to the east and take a look at the surface map out here, and you still see that reservoir of moisture extending out here to the east. Relatively weak, chaotic surface flow. You'll see 5 to 10 knots across this entire region. And again, that's not going to change a whole lot because we don't have strong surface cyclogenesis to deal with that will strengthen and back those winds in the low level in the warm sector. But that's not going to be an issue, at least as far as moisture return goes. Oftentimes, you need that surface flow to develop to really get the um, that moisture in into your target area or area of interest. Not going to be the case today as our moisture basically is already in this uh, zone. We may see weak cyclogenesis here ahead of that surface or that, that short wave out here across northern Texas at some point today, but it's not going to be your classic very strong cyclogenesis you might see with a typical uh, as a typical upper trough traverses the Rockies. You get surface uh, lee cyclogenesis, etc. Not going to be the case today. We may get a weak frontal wave to develop along that frontal zone, but other than that, we're not going to, going to see a robust low-level response with this particular event. But we don't really need it as we, at least for moisture returns sake as we already have a very uh, large reservoir of moisture in place across the region. 
let's look at some soundings now. This is the 12Z Fort Worth sounding. And a couple things you notice right off the bat, we do have quite a bit of elevated instability ongoing, very steep lapse rates aloft, remnants of the elevated mix layer in place, the EMLs that steep that layer of warm, dry air, well-mixed air, and steep lapse rates that emanates out here near the surface and just above in the southwest in western Mexico gets transported across the region on that broad, mid-level, southwesterly flow. Do have some very strong uh, evidence of that in place today, and so we have already seen some elevated instability, thus we have some severe storms ongoing uh, that are acting on that instability this morning. And that will uh, maintain throughout the day, uh, but storms will likely become surface-based at some point as that short wave moves in, as we get some surface heating to erode that capping inversion, as well as con some continued moistening there in the low levels. We do have some drier air to deal with. As we said, that um, elevated mixed layer in place is associated with some drier air. That may have a little bit of impact on updrafts as well. That dry air can get entrained into the updrafts uh, and, uh, you know, have some impacts on the overall robustness of the updrafts, but given the um, subtle forcing, the frontal forcing from the frontal zone, and a very moist uh, low-level atmosphere that should continue to deepen here throughout the day, not expecting to see too many impacts from that little bit of drier air aloft for today's event. Hodographs already favorable, long hodographs uh, at this point, uh, effective shear already about 60 knots or so, so the hodographs are long. We should see a slight increase in the low-level shear as well throughout the day. These winds are going to remain somewhat veered today across the region, a little bit more out of the southwest than what we like to see, but we still should have adequate low-level shear for a tornado threat. As far as hail goes, moderate instability across the region and in that hail growth layer, uh, and we do have deep layer shear favorable for rotating strong updrafts, so the large hail threat is, in t is on tap for today. Perhaps some significant hail uh, given somewhat weak low-level shear, at least for the first several hours of this event, uh, before low-level low level shear might ramp up a little bit this evening. So weaker low-level shear, moderate instability in that hail growth layer, and deep layer shear favorable for supercells, all point all signs point to a hail threat for today, perhaps being the main threat. We may see some tornado threat as well, given some low-level shear that might increase with time, but for now it looks like a um, the overall threat is going to be for large hail and maybe some damaging winds. Let's go a little bit farther to the east, Shreveport, very similar situation, a little bit capped there in the low levels, some elevated instability, uh, so we should see that continue, those storms continue for a while uh, this, uh, this morning before perhaps be, uh, reaching a lull about midday, uh, and then we should see a, either re-intensification of those storms or new storm development in the Arklatex vicinity later this afternoon. Here's Little Rock, much cooler at the surface, just maybe somewhat just north of that warm front. Some drier air in those mid-levels as well, but we still have some elevated instability there. All signs point to a large hail threat with the storms today. So let's take a look at some model data here. We're going to use the uh, 6Z NAM. The 12Z NAM is not quite in yet. I'm doing this video a little bit earlier than usual. But the NAM overall has a very similar picture to the other models, at least as far as the background pattern goes. So should give us a good idea of our severe threat for the next couple of days. So we'll start with today. Uh, the initialization looks very good. Very strong long wave trough across the west coast with some embedded perturbations within the flow. And at 500 millibars, you can actually see it this little belt of enhanced flow right in here, you'll notice it, it starts to take shape there about midday. This little belt of flow uh, in what we call some a split flow pattern. We have our main jet stream up here associated with the trough and our subtropical jet down here across uh, areas just to the south. This subtropical jet, this southernmost jet, is going to be our main focus for today's threat. And that is our uh, um, host to our subtle perturbation. We'll see, we'll take a look at 700 millibars in a second. That will be the impetus for today's event. But you see this broad area of stronger flow within the mainly zonal flow across the region. That is going to be that little perturbation we're talking about for today's event. We go down to 700 millibars, and you can really see the progress of that little shortwave trough. It's a little short wave, lots of ripples here in the flow that may assist with today's event. By 18Z, you really see it here across North Texas, the Red River vicinity. Little short wave, little bit of enhanced flow right in there. Storm should help, should be able to intensify ahead of that this afternoon across the Arklatex region. So very interesting setup here, not something we see very often. Usually we see you know significant severe weather events associated with a big trough like this, but these subtle little perturbations in the flow can actually uh, induce some pretty... Uh, impressive severe weather themselves. 
So 850 millibars, as we said, not going to be a, a very robust low-level response. As you can see, that low-level jet doesn't really uh, do much throughout the day. A little bit of an increase after dark into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Could see a few severe storms even as far out as those areas as well. But for our main area along the frontal zone, especially out to the west, not a ton of low-level shear to speak of. Let's go down to the surface real quick. And you'll notice we do have somewhat of a surface low here. That has moved off since into Missouri, as we said. Uh, here we go with that. Moves off toward the northeast. And that frontal zone really just sits there throughout the entire day. You can really see it on the dew point map. Uh, but those dew points, that reservoir moisture surges a little bit northward through the morning and then really just stalls out as that surface low moves off into the Ohio River Valley up in here. That frontal zone will stay somewhere in this vicinity right here, central Arkansas down into northeast Texas. And anything that rides along that, as we know, will have an enhanced threat for a few tornadoes, given some enhanced low-level shear along the boundary. So we'll have to watch that position of the frontal zone for today's event, as that will be the focus for the greatest tornado threat uh, right along that frontal zone. But as you can see, very strong looking moisture profiles, moisture reservoir across in the low levels for today's event. And again, this fairly easy forecast for today, right ahead of that, uh, that little perturbation in the flow near the uh, surface frontal zone is going to be our best favored location for severe storms today. Probably going to re-intensify there somewhere in northeast Texas, the Arklatex vicinity, and then move off into southern Arkansas today. We also may see some storms out here across this region, you know, uh, northern Mississippi, northern, northwest Alabama, southern Tennessee. Uh, just south of that frontal zone that may have a severe threat as well. So given a little bit stronger low-level jet out here across the southeast states, may see a few tornadoes out there uh, as well. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let's take a sounding out here. We'll start at uh, 21Z, and let's go right here, right near Texarkana. And that will give us a good look at the overall uh, environment here at 21Z. So this is going to be 3 p.m. Central Standard Time here today. And this is what we got going on, at least it's what the NAM is showing. 72 over 68. Again, the NAM tends to be a little bit too cool, so that may be a little bit warmer than that. Overall, hodograph is fairly favorable for supercells. Long hodograph, deep layer shear approaching 70 knots there. Low level shear is a little bit on the weak side. Not a ton of veering in those low, low level winds. We do see a little bit more of a backed wind with this particular model run. A little bit more of a southerly wind, but very weak at the surface. And you don't see a ton of that really strong clockwise curvature we like to see with these hodographs for a significant tornado threat. But again, a, right along that frontal zone is where the shear is going to be enhanced. We may actually see a little bit greater low level shear if we were to pick the sounding right on the frontal zone. Overall, instability is favorable, 1,500 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape, a little bit on the skinny side, I would say, but not really any inversions to deal with. We do see some moistening, uh, we do see dry air early on, as we saw in our observed soundings. That does uh, go away with time and moisten a little bit there in the mid and low levels. So not too much of a concern with that. But decent instability, low level shear, and deep layer shear favorable for supercells. Tornado threat confined right to the boundary, but we should see some large hail given some fairly moderate instability. Uh, and weaker low-level shear, at least initially with this event. Let's take a look a little bit farther out to the east, how about? And let's take a look at, let's go ahead to 0Z, actually, and take a look. We'll go right here, Texarkana once again, then we'll go out toward the east, maybe uh, maybe northern, northwest Mississippi, just to get an idea. And as you can see, the instability by 0Z, at least on this model run, increases pretty drastically, over 2,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape by 0Z. Uh, very strong low-level instability, over 100 joules per kilogram of 0 to 3 kilometer cape, with an increase in low-level shear there out in the Texar in the Arklatex vicinity. A little bit more curvature there in the low levels. The surface wind's very weak. You can see that sur open circle there. That indicates a calm wind at the surface, which is quite unusual for a you know big tornado type event. Usually, you want to see some stronger surface winds. But because we have very limited low-level flow, and we do have some veering in those winds in those that very lowest level of the atmosphere, uh, we do have a little bit of curvature within the hodograph, and that will allow for a tornado threat with this particular setup. Once again, deep layer shear favorable for supercells today. So, given that the forcing is going to be fairly weak, um, I do think we won't will see a fairly discrete um, in discrete mode for quite a few hours, at least initially with these storms. 
uh, initially will have a significant hail threat as they move off toward the northeast, and then as low-level shear increases a little bit into the early evening hours, we may see an increase in that low-level shear and then a ramp up in the tornado threat closer to sunset. Farther out to the east, very similar looking profile. And we do have a strong looking uh, instability profile, 1500 joules per kilogram there. A little bit of an inversion maybe to deal with as far as this particular model run goes. Not sure if that is a NAM quirk or not. Wouldn't be too concerned about it. Deep layer shear, definitely favorable for supercells still out east. Again, this is northwest Mississippi. A little bit of low-level shear to deal with. A little bit more um, surface wind out there uh, and some veering in those low-level winds. So a tornado or two is uh, possible out there in northern Mississippi into northern Alabama later this evening. So eventually storms should congeal into more of a cluster or line as that front. You can see that front doesn't move a whole lot. Right along that front, we could get some more development as we go into the um, evening hours. But again, I think a discrete uh, mode it will be favored given the very, very subtle forcing for the first few hours of today's event. And let's look at the HRRR. This is the latest run. Let me see if the 12Z is out. 12Z is out far enough for us to look at the latest run. So first thing to note is that the um, HRRR does not have any of this activity across the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area right now. So that is something to note with this particular model run. May need to take it with a grain of salt. But what it shows in the um, afternoon hours, storms form just east of the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. And you can see a quite discrete mode with these very uh, many discrete updrafts within this complex here, especially with southern extent right along that frontal zone. Those would have the greatest threat for tornadoes there right along the Red River in northeast Texas, far southeast Oklahoma into southwest Arkansas. Lots of discrete activity moving into Arkansas into the evening hours. Um, and if these storms stay discrete right along that frontal zone, they will have a tornado threat as the low-level shear increases just a bit. And then eventually we should see a more clustered uh, linear uh, type mode as we go into the um, evening and overnight hours tonight as storms move into Tennessee and northern Mississippi and Alabama. So very interesting event for today. Not something we see all that often as we don't really have a big trough in play. But that's not going to be the case for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and dive into tomorrow's threat. Once again, moderate risk out for the basically the same areas, the Arklotex vicinity uh, with a 15 hash tornado threat and other significant hazards on tap as well. So let's take a look at some model data. Let me go back to the 500 millibar map and we'll zoom out a little bit here. So once again, we'll go start at the beginning of the period. This trough digs down very nicely into the desert southwest by tomorrow morning. And by mid-afternoon, we do see that trough start to traverse the Rockies. We should get some surface load development out in here, probably somewhere in West Texas uh, by um, morning to midday on Thursday, tomorrow. Uh, and then we should see that the surface features really perk up after that. But this trough, very potent trough, takes on a very neutral tilt and then really takes on a negative tilt as we go into the evening and overnight hours. You see that axis of the trough really shifts from basically a meridional or north-south orientation to a very negatively tilted uh, orientation right there as we go into the evening hours. So that trough will be strengthening throughout the day, placing the Arklotex region uh, in the exit region, very favorable defluence aloft, um, directional divergence with this particular system. Again, that's the uh, wind barbs spreading apart across this region. And you do see a little bit of that across northeast Texas, right in that moderate risk region as that trough moves in. So very favorable looking upper level profile for synoptic scale ascent. We've talked about this before, that directional divergence, the spreading apart of those wind vectors in the upper levels of the atmosphere creates a void. Mother Nature doesn't like that, so tries to bring air up from below and, and somewhat of a vacuum effect to fill that void. And that's how we get large scale rising motion for storm initiation in a given environment. So very favorable look, at least in the mid and upper levels here with this trough moving in uh, for tomorrow's event. No wonder the synoptics are not going to be an issue with uh, the Thursday event. Let's go down to 850 millibars. We'll, we should see a much more robust response in the low levels with tomorrow's event than we will see today as we will have that trough traversing the Rockies. We should get least cyclogenesis to the east of the Rockies somewhere in eastern New Mexico, West Texas by tomorrow afternoon. And yeah, you can see that right there by Thursday afternoon. We start to see a very um, 
concentrated area of low-level cyclogenesis there across that region uh, and further strengthens as we go into the late afternoon and evening hours. This is at 0Z, very strong cyclone here with a very strong low-level jet increasing into the late afternoon and evening hours across the Arclotex vicinity down south into East Texas, Louisiana, and southwest Arkansas. So that will be the favored area for significant severe weather tomorrow, this area where the low-level jet is strongest up there in the Arclotex and the low-level jet will continue to strengthen overnight, so any storms that are ongoing will likely congeal into a line given very strong forcing, uh, but also have a, a continued severe threat given a very strong low-level shear profile that will be in place thanks to that low-level jet. Surface pattern, let's go ahead and look at that. And as you can see, very similar look to that surface low starts to develop somewhere in West Texas by um, lunchtime on Thursday and we'll traverse off toward the northeast very quickly. You see a very wound up surface low here on the NAM in southeast Oklahoma by 0 Z, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow. Uh, and that will allow the dry line and cold front, dry line to set up and then the cold front to push east very rapidly uh, along uh, to the south of that surface low. Now this will be a very complex scenario. We will have multiple rounds and multiple areas for potential severe weather across the region. Let's look at our dew points. Let me zoom in here to our Southern Plains sector. So again, that reservoir of moisture not going to be an issue with this particular event. It will stay there throughout the day today into the overnight hours tomorrow and be set up perfectly for our event. So no need to worry about moisture return with this event, unlike our previous event a few days ago here in Oklahoma. But as we go into the afternoon hours, we will see that dry line start to set up across the area. Surface low will be somewhere up in here, probably, by 21Z, about 3 p.m. Uh, uh, Thursday. Dry line, somewhat of a wavy dry line out to the west with a warm frontal zone extending off to the east. And a very, very broad warm sector here to deal with. This is a very wide warm sector. You can see that those, those blue contours, those 60s plus dew points, extend well off to the east, even out of frame there into the, the part, places like Georgia and Florida. So a very broad warm sector. That means a very broad area of potentially uh, juicy air for severe storms to work off of. So we're going to have multiple rounds of severe storms. We're going to see storms perhaps initially early in the morning on uh, Thursday, as we will have perhaps a little small perturbation ro rotate through. You see this little kink in the flow here at 700 millibars, a little bit of an area of enhanced flow. That may set off some severe storms across central to northeast Texas early in the morning on Thursday. So the morning commute may get a little dicey around Dallas, Fort Worth tomorrow morning. These storms will be elevated uh, as the main thermodynamics will not, will not be in place yet. So mostly an elevated hail threat but could be some significant hail with these early storms. And now those will continue to move off toward the northeast during the day. And as they interact with the warm front and we get some better thermodynamics in place by the afternoon, these may start to re-intensify here across southeast Oklahoma, southwest Arkansas, into northeast Texas. And then we may see an all-hazards threat start to develop with those. We, also, we may also see some additional development out here along uh, near that warm front. And as we know, the warm front is a favored location for uh, tornadoes, given the very strong low-level shear, enhanced low-level low shear along that boundary. So let me go down to the surface here, and we can better pick out our features. So our surface low going to be somewhere up in here. Very complex surface pattern here, maybe a couple different low centers, a little bit of a meso low there in North Texas, maybe a broader surface low out here in the Texas Panhandle. Uh, so that'll be interesting to watch evolve, but you can see the wind shift there. That is going to be our warm frontal zone right there across the Red River vicinity into southern Arkansas. You can see the wind shift there. That means very strong low-level shear along that boundary just ahead of the surface low. Let me take a sounding out ahead of that surface low right along the Red River, uh, just south, just near the Durant, Oklahoma area. And... One thing, first thing we notice is very strong instability tomorrow. That instability not going to be an issue over 2,000 joules per kilogram of cape. Much fatter instability than what we're going to see perhaps today, at least in the early portion of the event today. Very strong low-level instability, about 200 joules per kilogram, a mix of three, uh, zero to three kilometer cape there. So very strong low-level and deep layer instability. Hodographs are a little bit wonky. We see a little bit of a kink in the hodographs there. But overall, we do see very strong veering in those low-level winds in a general sense. Uh, with those winds strengthening as you go up into the at low levels of the atmosphere. So hodographs favorable for supercells, deep layer shear very, very strong, with some tornado threat, at least initially. This may be a NAM quirk, uh, I'm not sure, 
but overall low level veering of those winds with height should suggest a tornado threat with those storms uh, especially closer to the warm front where the low level shear is maximized we will also have storm development out along the dry line back here to the west dry line will focus there and you can see that the dry air pushing in that's the cold front by late afternoon to early evening, that dry line will get overtaken by the cold front and really start to surge east, and we should get more of a linear, uh, develop, more linear development as that cold front overtakes the dry line late tomorrow afternoon into evening. But along the dry line, let's take a sounding out in here, just ahead of this dry line bulge, um, southwest of the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. Um, let's see what the profiles are out there. So, once again, very strong instability, not quite as much low-level shear to deal with. Deep layer shear is still very favorable for supercells. So I think more of a large hail threat initially with those storms out uh, on the dry line slash cold front. Um, we should have fairly discrete development at first, I would think. Here's our, keep in mind where our boundary is. Let me draw it in for us, and then we'll take a look at our shear vectors here along the boundary. And let's go ahead and look at our shear vectors. So there's our boundary. Let me scroll down just a tad. So there's our boundary. And our shear vectors are, at least in northern portions, quite parallel to the boundary. In southern portions, they are a little bit more off the boundary. So we may see a slightly more discrete mode down here with southern extent along that dry line. But once the cold front overtakes the dry line, we should have very strong forcing for ascent along that front, and we should see a very quick transition to a linear organization to those storms along the dry line once that cold front overtakes it. So we'll have to watch that along the dry line, along the warm front ahead of the surface low, where low level shear and uh, may be maximized, especially out even into um, southern Arkansas here, farther out along the warm front. Forcing may be a little bit more subtle out here, although shear vectors may be a little bit more parallel to the boundary out in here as well. Um, but we should have the tornado threat maximized there across the Arklatex vicinity, right ahead of that surface low. And so farther out east, very wonky looking photographs here, uh, at least initially. I think that will change as we go into the evening hours. Let me pull up a sounding uh, here in a second. Before we do that, though, we also need to look for any prefrontal confluence bands out in here. Once again, this warm sector is really, really broad. So we have lots of room for there to be very subtle prefrontal confluence bands out here in the open warm sector. Not really seeing any right now here on this particular NAM run, run. Maybe a little bit of a prefrontal trough or a little bit of a kink there in the flow out into Louisiana and East Texas. We'll have to watch that for sure and look at that as that could be a focus for more discrete development out here in the open warm sector well ahead of those surface boundaries uh, tomorrow. If we look at 850 millibars, we don't really see any uh, troughiness or kink there in the flow. So prefrontal warm sector convection may be a little bit tough to come by. We will be very weakly, we will be uncapped pretty much throughout that warm sector for much of the day. So we will have to watch that those surface maps and those low level, the 850 millibar maps to see if any low level confluence bands set up as those could be a more subtle forcing mechanism for discrete storms in an equally favorable environment. Let me take a sounding out here. This is gonna be at zero Z. And we will see a favorable environment for supercells. Yeah, out there in the open warm sector, a little bit more capping to deal with according to the NAM, um, but um, that could be a NAM thing. Again, temperature only in the 70s. I have a feeling that's a little bit too cool. So, But look at the hotographs here. This is definitely the most favorable hotograph we've seen for significant tornadoes or significant severe hazards out here in the open warm sector. So any supercell that can fire in the open warm sector and stay discreet will have an all hazards threat, with including some threat for significant uh, hazards there. But looking like that threat is somewhat conditional, the most favored areas for storm development will be ahead of the surface low, near that warm front, and along the dry lines and eventual dry line cold front intersection there across uh, central Texas into the Arklatex. So we move on to zero Z. Let's take a couple soundings out here across. Uh, we'll take one here from Idabel, Oklahoma, far southeast Oklahoma, and then one ahead of the dry line here just south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area just to see. So by 0Z, that low-level jet really starts to ramp up, and these hodographs are pretty darn favorable for significant tornadoes, about 500 meters squared per second squared of, of effective storm relative helicity, with a very look, favorable-looking instability profile, about 1,600 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape, deep layer shear favorable for, for supercell. So any supercell moving into this environment will have the, the chance of producing a significant tornado and damaging wind threat. Large hail threat should decrease, I would think, uh, as the low-level shear increases. We've seen some work done uh, here recently showing that stronger low-level shear 
uh, mitigates the overall large hail risks. Risk. So I think early on storms may take on, at least near the warm frontal zone, those early storms may have a hail threat with them, but we should transition to more of a tornado and damaging wind threat ahead of that surface low as that low level shear ramps up big time as we go into the evening. So very favorable look for significant severe weather there across the Arklatex. This is farther to the south. A little bit less instability here model on the NAM. Once again, temperatures may be a little bit too cool. But now still a very favorable looking profile for severe storms. Tornado threat with those as well. A little bit of backing in the mid-levels here. This is pretty significant backing. Uh, and you can see it in the wind profile here. We start with veering in the low levels, then very significant backing as you go up between about 850 and 700 millibars there. So that may have an impact. Uh, this much backing may have an impact on the overall ability for long track mesocyclones out here on the dry line and cold front. Plus the unfavorable storm mode. I think more of a large hail threat initially with the storms along the dry line and cold front transitioning to mostly a damaging wind and maybe an embedded spin up tornado threat with storms along the eventual QLCS that will develop along that cold front uh, into the late early evening hours here there across central to north central Texas and far southern Oklahoma. Once again, the threat in the open warm sector will be there. We'll have to watch for any confluence bands out there and the overall um, profiles will be very favorable for severe weather as we saw there pending the erasure or erosion of this cap um, that is present on the NAM. Not sure again if that's a NAM model quirk, but we'll have to watch that for sure. And then you can see the cold front surges east. We should have a continued severe threat with that as it moves off into the Arklatex, into Louisiana and Mississippi quickly into the overnight hours on Thursday. We do have the some of the cams out far enough. I don't believe um, our cams like the ARW and NSSL Wharf are out far enough yet for tomorrow's event. Nope, they're not. So we'll just look at the HER right now. Again, take this with an absolute grain of salt because it is the 48-hour HER. This is, it's always not a great idea to look at the 48-hour HRRR, but it could give us a potential idea what we might see as far as storm mode tomorrow. So there's today's event. We go into the evening tonight. Lots of storms there in Arkansas and Tennessee. And then you see in the morning hours, ahead of that initial short wave, short wave, we may see some development down there across central to south central Texas in the morning that may have a hail threat. And then we should see that, that uh, development intensify out ahead of the surface low across north central Texas into the Arklatex. Ahead of that surface low, right along the warm front, again, those will have the greatest threat for significant tornadoes given very strong low level shear along that boundary right ahead of that surface low. Then we will see a congealing of those storms along the dry line, maybe some discrete elements at first before things transition into a full squall line. Continued tornado threat with any discrete storms out here in the eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas, and a damaging wind threat will take over along that QLCS uh, into uh, eastern Texas, southeast Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, into the overnight hours on Friday, or on Thursday, excuse me. Now, let's take a quick look at Friday. Um, we're, there's still a little bit of discrepancy for Friday. Once again, a broad, slight risk area from the Ohio River Valley down south to the southeast states and Carolinas. We'll go back out to our NAM here, our uh, 500 millibar map. So that trough, what's gonna, going to happen overnight is that trough takes on a very negative tilt and will eject off toward the northeast and start occluding a little bit. So this will be on, a, a, on kind of a weakening trend as we go into Friday as far as the upper low goes. But Across this region, we will have very strong flow, very strong divergent, directional divergence of those winds aloft. So we should have favorable conditions for a continuation of the severe threat. There should be a line of storms ongoing across the southeast in the Mississippi River Valley Friday morning. That will continue east throughout the morning and afternoon hours into the slight risk area on Friday. Uh, very strong trough here, uh, very strong trough ejection off to the, toward the northeast broad flow across the region um, should be a favorable situation to continue the severe threat. 850 millibar, low level jet will be in place across the region, very strong low level flow uh, as that cyclone uh, somewhat occludes there. Uh, so very favorable uh, wind profiles for severe storms, no doubt, across this region. Surface low very strong, occludes off toward the northeast as well. And you see, we'll see it better in the dew point map, but that warm sector eventually does get pinched off a little bit, especially with northern extent into the Ohio River Valley there on Friday morning and afternoon. Down to the south, ahead of the line, we do have a little bit of a warm sector that tries to develop as that trough moves away. The overall synoptic scale forcing will move away. We may see a slowdown in this convective line, perhaps with more so in the southern portions 
of the line. We, we, we will have, we, this At least the NAM run has a little bit of a warm sector developing out ahead of it. So we may have enough room for a few prefrontal discrete supercells out in here if we can get any little short waves or prefrontal confluence bands out in here. 700 millibars, maybe a little bit of a kink in the flow there. We'll have to watch here. They're at 700 millibars. And if we see any prefrontal confluence bands there, uh, we'll have to watch those for sure. Maybe something very subtle prefrontal trough right in there just out ahead of the main convective line. So we'll have to watch that. If we do get discrete development out, out ahead of the line, that may be a favorable environment for some significant severe weather. And we may see an upgrade in this risk uh, at some point in time. But again, this is somewhat conditional now. We're still a few days out, but take a look at that wind profile. That wind profile is absolutely crazy for severe storms, over 500 meters squared per second squared of, of effective storm relative helicity. Deep layer shear favorable for supercells and severe storms. Instability on the weaker side here. Uh, so we'll have to watch that for sure. Very skinny instability. Um, but in these shear profiles, we'll need to watch out uh, anyway um, for a significant severe threat from somewhere across the Alabama and Georgia vicinity there. Warm front is a uh, warm sector, definitely wide enough for severe storms into the afternoon hours out there. And if, again, if we get any discrete development out ahead of the line, the line will have a severe threat as well, damaging winds, embedded tornadoes. If we do get discrete development out ahead of the line out here across eastern Alabama into Georgia, then those will have the, a, a conditional significant severe threat uh, pending uh, enough instability there. But those wind profiles, man, those look pretty insane for significant severe weather, especially uh, peaking around midday there across the southeast. So we'll have to watch that for sure into um, Friday. Uh, but for now, that's we'll leave it at that and allow some more data to come in before we make a uh, more refined forecast. So that's going to do it for today. Once again, a very potent severe weather outbreak um, on tap starting today. Once again, today's threat uh, is a slight risk, level 2 out of 5, from northern Texas into southern Arkansas, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, southern Tennessee, uh, with an all-hazards threat, 5% tornado threat in there along that frontal zone, which will be the focus for storm development today. Any storm that can ride that front will have a tornado threat as well as a damaging wind, and perhaps a significant threat given ample instability aloft and at least weak low-level shear to begin this particular event. Low-level jet will ramp up a little bit. Low-level low shear will ramp up a little bit as we go towards sunset today. Um, but mainly a large hail threat with a, some tornado threat as well. Then the main event comes tomorrow. Once again, a moderate risk, level 4 out of 5 for that same Arklatex region. Dallas, Fort Worth, once again, you are just on the outside looking in of that moderate risk. But I would prepare as if you uh, are in that moderate risk. Significant severe weather is likely for tomorrow, whether it's in the form of discrete supercells in the morning to early afternoon hours there, or along the uh, strong QLCS that will develop in the uh, afternoon to evening hours there moving east across your region. The, the greatest threat for strong tornadoes will be up here along that Arklatex vicinity. Um, places like Hugo, Ida Bell, down into Sulphur Springs, Mount Pleasant, Texarkana, Shreveport, uh, Tyler, Longview, the I-20 and I-30 corridors there in northeast Texas under the gun for the moderate risk, the greatest severe weather threat tomorrow. Surrounded by a large enhanced risk all severe hazards likely significant on the table. EF2 plus tornadoes possible there within that hatched region, most notably within that 15 hatched region there in that moderate risk. Damaging winds as well, significant damaging winds possible as well as significant hail. So that's for Thursday and then Friday. We'll wait to make a more refined forecast on that, but a large slight risk there from Kentucky down south to the southeast states and the Carolinas with an all hazards threat, mostly a tornado and damaging wind threat both along the convective line that will be moving east throughout the morning hours there across the southeast, as well as any prefrontal development here across Alabama into Georgia. We'll have to watch that closely. If we can get some prefrontal discrete supercells to develop there, they will have a, a conditional significant tornado threat and, and damaging wind threat as well. So a very complex setup on tap for the next couple of days. If you live in any of these areas, and if you're in any color greater than the dark green there, uh, you need to be on alert for significant severe weather over the coming days. Have your weather radios handy. Have multiple ways to receive warnings. Have a shelter that you can go to if you don't have a shelter nearby, as we may see some pretty significant severe weather over the next few days. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.